Hi there, and welcome to The Peaceful Home. I'm so glad you joined me today for part two of Extreme Bathroom Organization. Now, part one, I will link that below in case you missed it, covered really the unseen areas, the drawers, the cabinets, medicine cabinet, the places where we can shove things in and they're hidden, so we're not always really motivated to clean those up, but that video takes you through step-by-step step, um, decluttering and organizing all of those spaces. Today, we're gonna tackle the scene areas, what you see when you walk into your bathroom, what you're looking at as you're sitting brushing your teeth in the morning, even in the bathroom. We want to feel confident that our space is organized and beautiful. If you're new here, my name is Teresa Elling, and I'm a professional organizer, also a parenting coach, and my most important roles as a wife, homeschool mom to six graduated kids and a grandma. The first thing we're going to do is deep clean the bathroom. This is more the things that you do not do every week and they build up. Follow along with me as I go top to bottom all the way around my bathroom looking for areas to deep clean. One of the most important things to remember is that dust and grime stick to horizontal surfaces the most. So anywhere you have a surface, the top of the lights, the top of the clock, the top of my medicine cabinet, these little shelves, these are all things that I will make sure to deep clean, as well as the um, grooves in cabinetry, molding on the floor, and then the tops of the shower. They usually have a little bit of a groove and they need to be cleaned out. They collect dust. I also have taken down the air vent because I'm going to clean that out. This one, you have to take a screwdriver, so I'll just wipe that down while leaving it up. I think that's most of it, so let's get started. I'm done with most of the cleaning. There's just a couple things left I wanna do. I showed you that I removed the grate from the ceiling from the fan. And sometimes I don't plan this very well. For example, I was ready to launch into decluttering and deep cleaning the bathroom, and I had pulled that down and cleaned it, and then thought, oh, this would be a great video. So sometimes that's just the way it is. So I had already cleaned this grate, but I went in to the guest bathroom. It has the exact same one, and you need to take a look at this. It's really gross. This is what it looks like. It doesn't take long for it to get like this. At least once a year, pull this down and clean it. All you have to do is put it in your kitchen sink and wash it like a dish. Now here's the one that I've already cleaned. So much better. And I just wanted to show you, most of these are very similar. They have these springy clips. And when you're putting them in, all you need to do is squeeze them together and insert them. You'll be able to see the metal brackets that they slide into, kind of like a coin slot. So you squeeze and you set them up there and then you let them go and they catch. And then all you have to do is just push this straight up. 
And to remove it, you pull it down and then it'll be hanging. And then you squeeze the clips together to get them through the holes. The other thing I clean out is the stopper for the drain. Usually when you pull these out, they are really gunky and gross. I always have a cleaning toothbrush somewhere. Um, I make sure to mark it. Usually I'll put a piece of duct tape around it. That's a signal to the whole family that it's a cleaning toothbrush. This one I marked with um, permanent marker. So take this and just scrub out all the yucky stuff. Hydrogen peroxide works great to bubble everything up and get it clean. And then you can actually clean down inside. Use the toothbrush, making sure not to drop it, to scrub the sides. And if you ever have a clog, you can use a bent wire hanger. My dad taught me this trick when I was young and I have had one of these and taken it to every house we've lived in. You just bend up the end of the wire so that you can go straight down and kind of twist it and turn it. And if there's any clogged hair or anything else, it will pull right out. And then you can pour peroxide in there and also into the overflow hole that is located just inside the sink. So put the peroxide in, I mean like half a bottle. Let it bubble up, leave it for maybe an hour, and then rinse with hot water. Now that's it for the basic maintenance and deep cleaning. Now I'm going to just start sprucing up. One of the main things I wanna do is touch up this cabinet. I had decided when I originally painted it, when the paint began to wear off, I would either touch up paint or I would distress further and sand edges and have the wood tone coming through. I decided just to go ahead and paint. I'm gonna do some touch up. And the paint that I used for this cabinet and the one in my guest bath is this enamel paint that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. It is uh, Deco Art Americana Satin Enamels. And I really um, was very pleased with this paint. Again, we've lived here almost four years and really in just the last six months have I started to see considerable wear. Uh, this is kind of the blue green that's in the guest bath and I'll probably do a little touch up in there, but very inexpensive. <music> so good to have this cabinet painted and just the little bit of touch up I did just makes these look like new again. I also got a new rug. We had had a temporary rug here for quite a while and I just wasn't finding the right thing and to be honest I ran to town in the middle of this shooting today to get a rug at Target because I'm just done. I can't wait for the perfect thing. I got one and it it's great. So I'm so glad to have this space finished. I'm going to talk about four things that you can do in your bathroom to really spruce it up. The first thing is artwork. You really want to treat the bathroom like any other room in your house. And so anything on the wall serves as artwork to me. So that could be something like this shelf, which is also functional, and even the towel rack. I personally love hooks because I like to quickly hang things rather than having to fold and try to put it over a bar, but that's just my personal preference. I like the way hooks look and they're really easy. You do want to make sure that in the winter you get your towels laid out and dry before you hang them against a wall. Um, especially if you have any kind of problem with mildew. In the summer you don't really have to worry about it. Anyway, simple paintings, drawings, anything that you'd want to put on your wall can bring in color, can bring in some decor, and represent your own personal style. One of the things I did with this little gallery wall is there was one wood frame, and I felt like it kind of stuck out. I have several gold things, I have several white frames, but it was the only one in natural wood. And it bothered me a little bit, and so I just did kind of a whitewashing over the frame so it would blend in a little bit better. These are two of my favorite paintings. I thrifted these in a trip to Palm Springs probably 15 years ago, and I love these little birds, and I think they look really great over this table. Number two, show off the things that are pretty. Use pretty containers to store the things that are kind of pretty to look at in a bathroom. And also bins and trays like these. This white tray 
holds a whole bunch of practical things as well as some decorative things. And my wire basket holds uh, washcloths, hand towels, and bath bombs. I didn't like the way a few of my things sat on the side of the tub, like my razor, a plain bar of soap, and even the plug to the bath. They just seemed to roll around all over the place and would get the side of the tub wet. So I decided to grab this basket, line it with a washcloth, and place everything in there. The washcloth will absorb any extra water and it's easy to change out, wash, and put in a fresh one. Number three, disguise ugly things. So one great example would be mouthwash. Now, there's nothing wrong with having a mouthwash container sitting on your counter, um, but this is an easy thing to disguise. So I keep it in this bottle. I just simply refill it whenever it's empty. And this is really pretty sitting on the counter. Something new that I'm going to disguise are these liquid bath salts. Now I've used Epsom salts before and I've had those in a glass canister with a scoop. This is a liquid form, but I don't particularly like this container. <laughs> and uh, it's pretty bright. It would stand out quite a bit in my bathroom. And so I grabbed another bottle from my kitchen. This is one I thrifted years ago. And I just wrote bath salts just in case someone's in here that doesn't know what this is. And I'm going to go ahead and transfer the contents into the jar. To be honest, I always do this without a funnel, but I thought if I'm gonna do it on camera, <laughs> I don't wanna make a complete fool of myself. So I grabbed the funnel. My husband's gonna be really happy to have this and I will be happy to not be looking at that bright colored bottle anymore. I've also done the same thing with the shampoo and conditioner that sits by the tub. I had these two canisters from when we first moved in. It seemed like such a waste because I sat there for a year and finally I put those in the shower, we used it up and I put them away. But now that we're using the bath more, it's the perfect thing to have close by. I wanted to tell you about my curtain. This white curtain is one that I sewed when we first moved in and um, after the first like three summers, we realized we have direct sun coming straight in here for most of the morning and early afternoon. And it's just too hot here for that. So last summer was the first year that we got light blocking curtains. Those are the gray ones. And I'm a little late because this is new. Um, the plan is in the winter to put up the white ones because that actually lets the light and the heat in, which we want. And then in the summer, I'll put the gray ones back up and we will try to darken everything and keep it cool in here. <laughs> My number four thing to do to bring life and beauty into your space, I'm sure you've guessed it by now, is to bring in plants. I have all real plants in this bathroom and I love them. Um, of course, they are great for air quality. It's easy to water them. Every Monday is my indoor plant watering day. I keep a large cup right under my sink so that I can easily fill it and water the plants in here. I did bring in a new one, this pothos. And what else is new? These are just um, cuttings from it that I took off and these are so easy to start new ones. So they're just in water. The fern is new. I just got that one. I've had the pot, but I took out some overgrown succulents, moved those into a garden pot and got this fern. This ficus tree I've had for years and it hasn't grown much, but it's so pretty and it just brings a lot of life to the space. Um, and because it's oversized, you know, it has some presence in here and I love that. Back to one other decorating thing. As far as displaying things that are beautiful, I forgot about towels. Don't hide your towels away in a cabinet. Towels are so great to bring color into your space. Towels are easy to change up when they wear out and you can change colors, get new ones, roll them, stick them in a basket, fold them, set them on a shelf but they bring a lot of beauty and color, so don't hide those away. Well, this ends part two of this bathroom um, extreme organization series, and I hope it was helpful for you. I'd love to hear about your organizing journey. 
your successes, your failures, your questions. You can always comment below. Please like this video if you did enjoy it and share with a friend if you think it would be helpful. I would love it also if you subscribed and hit that notification bell. If you need to reach me, my information for social media is down in the description box as well as my email. I would love to hear from you. Thanks so much for joining me today on The Peaceful Home.